<clears throat> so if that seems like something you'd be interested in, definitely give us a follow. If you're on the YouTube side, definitely give me a one in the chat. Let me know that my audio is good because I don't want you to miss not one tidbit of this conversation because I have like four things I want to get into before we start talking about feminine conversation, sophisticated speech tips. <laughs> on how to keep his attention. A lot of people throughout the time that I've actually been working with women, one of my most frequent questions is how do I keep a man's attention without sex? And as we speak, there's a dusty arguing with me on IG. Don't you just love it? But anyway, <laughs> I'll get the notifications on my phone when they pop up. Shout out to everybody. Hit the link at the top if you're on my other platforms. Hit the link at the top and join us on the YouTube side because eventually I'm going to close those platforms and we're just going to be solely on YouTube. And that chat is private only for live. So the only time to really get um, conversation and ask me direct questions is going to be on the live YouTube feed so I can stay concentrated and get everything out. So welcome to Inner Beauty TV. I'm your host, Nicole Michelle. If you're not familiar with me, I would love to be your Naomi. Like Naomi Guided Ruth, helping high achieving women reconnect with their feminine power, their core, their essence, while simplifying the pathway to marriage. Today, I want to talk about a few things, but I first want to start by welcoming all of you to the channel, all of my new subbies, all of those of you who like and share my content. I appreciate you. It doesn't go unnoticed. I do pay attention to my analytics. I am not so huge that I don't pay attention to people liking, subscribing, commenting, sharing. I love you very, very much. And thank you so much for believing in my content enough to share it and definitely enough to subscribe and come back and talk to me. I'm here every Tuesday. I do not run from people. I do not give you advice and then run. I am here every Tuesday. So you can take me to task if it works or it doesn't work. And I never get people telling me it doesn't work. Even after they challenge me, I stand 10 toes down by what I tell you ladies. I do my research. I give you loving advice with the Christian ethos because our pillars here at Inner Beauty TV is faith, family, and femininity. If you'd like to stay in contact with us on a regular basis, definitely get on our newsletter at MrsNicoleMichelle.com. Get on our newsletter so you can know what's up. And I don't just send you emails selling to you. I actually talk to you every week so you know what's going on, what we're talking about, and give you little tidbits of advice in your email because some of you don't have time to listen to a video or follow me on IG and so forth. And your way of staying in contact with me is newsletter. You like to read. So I do the newsletter for those of you who like to read and you like to get advice through email. Also download the Feminine Elite Society app. As far as I know, we are the only branded app that actually preps you for wifehood in an app. For those of you on the go, you want affirmations, you want everything about leveling up is in our own app for elite women. You want to be away from the hoi polloi, the algorithms, the pandering, all of that. That is what that elite app is for. Shout out to all of the ladies on the app. And I'm always sending you messages. So those of you who are on the app, make sure your notifications are open so that you get the notifications. I'm always sending you downloads of books and all kinds of stuff. For those of you who want to know preppy speech and how to sound very elegant and all of those things that I tell you to watch out for, that stuff is on the app. All right. The first thing I want to cover, though, before we get into our main topic, and shout out to everybody on YouTube. I love y'all. Shout out to y'all sending hearts and hugs to all of you going into Valentine's Day. And those of you who listen to the replay at the time of this live recording, we're headed into Valentine's Day and everybody gets in a tizzy if they don't have a boo or if they they're hoping and praying and fingers crossed and all of those things going into the holiday. And you're always you're always going to know how people fared after the holiday passes because their attitude will shiftly change after that. But I believe that when you embrace just life 
and get all of the information you need to get. You don't have to fear holidays and you don't have to fear certain spaces and conversations. You can just go be a part of that and understand that your time is coming and you're just getting all the information you need to get gather the confidence to face these things. Why I don't discuss cheating on this channel is the first thing I wanted to talk about. And the reason why I don't talk about cheating, I only talk about cheating in terms of the other woman because there are women that specifically go after married men. And that doesn't mean he cheats and it doesn't mean that something's wrong with the wife and it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the marriage. If you have a good looking person and they happen to be married, at some point, someone is going to approach that person. That doesn't mean that they're cheating. So I don't approach it from the standpoint that the man is cheating. But I also am practical in understanding that there are more single women than there are single, uh, than there are married women and there are single more single men than there are married men so therefore there's always going to be this it's dangerous don't touch uh feeling towards married people and i get that and i understand that but i don't discuss cheating on this channel because i want you to be i don't want you to focus on cheating men and the reason why i do this is because Cheating men are literally proving to you that you shouldn't be with them, right? They have breached a high level of confidence with you, all right? So there's no reason to harp on cheating and why they cheat and how they cheat. By definition, he has told on himself and breached the highest level of covering and vulnerability that you can give a man which is believing in him and hoping that he keeps his vows and his promise. And I'm talking to people dating and I'm talking to people in committed relationships as well as marriage, that when a man breaches that, to me, it says a lot about him. He is not a, a man of honor. We talked about this last week. You can go check out that video, Man of Honor. He is not a man of integrity. That is not him. And he's letting you know that. I don't get into, should you take him back? Should you be, honestly, the, as much as men harp on a woman being loyal, a woman being by his side, a, what, all of this rhetoric we hear all over social media all day long about women needing to be loyal, it just naturally means that men understand loyalty because they want it the most. They should absolutely be the most loyal. And they breach this level of security that we have that should be in the marriage once he breaches that there's no more discussion i don't i don't want to talk about cheating at all he's letting you know what it is by cheating so it's really up to you whether you want to keep going or not but i don't do curriculum around cheating men i do curriculum around making you the best wife the best woman the best feminine woman you can be based on faith, family, and femininity, but I don't do curriculum designed to help you navigate. Uh, there are people that do content on that and shout out to them. And for those of you that are in marriages and you wanna fight for your marriage after infidelity, that is to be commended. I don't do content like that. I just don't <laughs> because I'm listening to men and they say loyalty is high on the, the you know, high on the, the, the the list for things that they want from a woman. So if that's what you're telling me, that means that you are gonna offer loyalty. And when you don't do that, you're letting me know what I need to do on my end. Let me make a phone call to my attorney. Does that make sense, ladies? That's what we do. So you won't see me addressing cheating that much here, just in passing, because I think it's a waste of my breath. Men aren't chasing anymore. It's hunger games out here. Absolutely. I have tapped into a lot of conversations and I'm hearing a lot of places where men are saying or encouraging men not to pursue women anymore. And I guess this must be true because the women are saying men don't want to take them out on dates. They want to be cheapies. They want to do Dutch. They don't really want to spend time getting to know a woman and that's what this lesson today is really going to be about is holding his attention keeping his attention 
without sex because that needs to be established before the couple can really move forward. But men are saying they're not chasing anymore, ladies. So a lot of information that you're getting, make him chase you, make him chase you. What you want to do is focus on becoming the type of woman that he will want. And that's what we do here on this channel, to be clear, is I teach you how to be this woman that it just makes so much logical sense for him to be with you that he just does it. A lot of times women try to appeal to a woman, uh, I'm sorry, a lot of women try to appeal to a man through his emotions when it comes to choosing her to be his wife. And that's not how men choose women to be their wives. They choose it based on logic followed by his feelings. Does it make logical sense for me to marry her? And then how does she make me feel? Because men will spend years with a woman that makes them feel great. Let me say that again. Men will spend years with a woman that makes them feel great, but it doesn't make logical sense to be with her. I'm gonna let that sit for a second. It doesn't make logical sense for him to be. So no matter what you say, I love you. No one can love you like me. We should be together. We love each other. We're so passionate. That means absolutely nothing. It, it means something, but it doesn't hold as much stock as it making logical sense to him. And this is why a lot of women will say, well, the reason why he married you is because of X, Y, and Z, but he's crazy about me. You're absolutely right. He married a woman based on logic, but he did not input his emotions into it too. So he's able to disconnect and go cheat. That is, that's, that's, that happens again. You see how cheating comes up and that, that happens, right? Not all the time, not, not even often, but it happens, right? But when a man only marries a woman for logic, it is problematic. And when a man only marries a woman for emotions, that's problematic. That's when he gets his head torn off the frame. She gets hurt. Everybody gets hurt. These codependent relationships. It's, it's abusive. It's all of those things because he only married for emotion. But healthy men that we all desire and love and want, they marry for logic first and then how she makes me feel. So if it makes logical sense and I'm crazy about her, boom, she's going to get a ring. And that's why a lot of women are still single because they only appeal to a man's emotions and you can't do that. You're going to be dating him forever or someone else who makes him feel good is going to come and replace you because you're only appealing to his emotions, which change. They evolve. And I talk about this in my first book about being a potato chip girl, right? You make him feel good in the moment, but over the long term, it fizzles out. And no, men do not chase women who just make them feel good. What men are saying is you look good and you make me feel good, but that's not enough to chase you because just like you're attractive and you make me feel good, it's like 10 other women that do the same thing. 10, 20 other women, like they can log on chat, Snapchat and IG, TikTok, Facebook, any place and get a woman and not even just on social media, just go out in life and there will be an attractive woman that makes him feel good that ignites his flames, okay? All right? <laughs> but it doesn't make logical sense for him to be with her. For example, a lot of people, welcome Rhonda to the live. You finally caught me live on YouTube. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Remember everything you say on YouTube is just between us because I get rid of the chat. I want you to feel safe to express yourself and not feel like it's going to come back to haunt you later because you said something in my chat. I want you to feel space. I want you to feel comfortable in my space. So, you know, a, um, a lot of people look up to Marilyn Monroe and I've said this before. I actually did a stream maybe two, three years ago about the Marilyn Monroe effect. I might need to do that again where people are just idolizing her and her business savvy was on point. Don't get me wrong. Her business savvy was great, but her, Romantic life was horrible, it was in shambles. And that doesn't mean that she was a bad person or that because of her circumstances that makes her a bad person. It's how she showed up with other people, with men. 
that allowed them to just walk all over the most one of the most beautiful women that has ever hit the silver screen and her legacy is great when it comes to being an actress but it's horrible when it comes to love and it's wonderful when it comes to femininity and showing that but we definitely don't want to use her as an avatar of a woman that you strive to be because we know how that ended we know how her life ended we know how the trains were run on her and how they talked about her behind her back we don't want to be that woman and a lot of men are coming in contact with women who have the Marilyn Monroe effect right they love the Marilyn Monroe the seduction the conversation the I mean you know um you know manipulative the femme fatale so to speak but then it doesn't make logical sense to be with her right and we see that well Marilyn Monroe was married three times well the first couple of marriages she was married to men who loved the ground she walked on who literally worshipped her lionized her and she did not want those men right she wanted her freedom she wanted it all and she didn't understand that she was self-sabotaging Joe DiMaggio and I talked about this in my book he literally left flowers on her grave every single day he loved her to the day he died her third marriage she married an uh, incel he should be the avatar for the manosphere actually Arthur Arthur Miller was an incel to the highest degree. I mean he was married but you have married incelish type men who are just kind of weird when it comes to beautiful women and he possessed Marilyn in a very very horrible way and it was, he was very controlling and very manipulative and he talked down to her and humbled her and subjugated her in a way till she was very very mistreated and a lot of women who think like Marilyn attract the exact same type of man like Arthur Miller. They love the fact that he legitimizes her. He makes her seem smart. He's expected. I mean, he's respected in the literary intelligentsia community. Like they like that part of him, but his countenance, his temperament was not a man of honor. He was not a gentleman. And he got with a, with a woman that was extremely beautiful and he couldn't handle it. And there are men out there like that. <laughs> and a lot of men have that Arthur Miller spirit, which I actually should do a live on that, breaking that Arthur Miller spirit down because it's not just her. That last marriage was all his fault. <laughs> I want to say it's mostly his fault, just going off of just how he really treated her being tender and he didn't want to see about her emotionally he didn't want to cover her emotionally and that's what a lot of men are saying right now is that they don't see the logic in pursuing a lot of women because they don't get anything out of it so pay attention to that ladies that's happening a lot men are saying they're not chasing anymore and those of you who are listening to me that are traditional women that's not how we court so that they're telling you right then and there they're not traditional and that's fine because there are way more women that are not traditional so that works but just understand and if you're traditional i'm sorry if you're not traditional you shouldn't be expecting a man to chase you let me say that again if you're not traditional you shouldn't be waiting for a man to chase you you can inbox him too let me say that again <clears throat> If you are not a traditional woman, you don't have to wait for him to inbox you. You can inbox him because you two are gonna be working more along uh, an equal partnership, 50-50 or whatever. And who, who, it doesn't matter who inboxes who, which will be the majority of women. So I've basically freed a lot of women of sitting of ha sitting up, having to wait for a man to inbox her. If you're a woman that you're going to remain in the workforce after marriage, if that's what you plan to do, there is nothing wrong with you inboxing a man. When Nicole, that, he should be pursuing me. Why? You want an equal partnership. You want an equal marriage. That's how that works. Right? <laughs> that's how that works. And that's another reason why men are not chasing because they get confused when they start pursuing a woman 
a lot of them do believe that you are traditional and that you will be submissive to a traditional man in that traditional structure sense. And then they find out that you're a career woman and then they get confused and they're like, wait a minute, this isn't what I signed up for. Some of them even go as far as marrying you. And then they go, this isn't what I signed up for. I'm out. And so now they're like back in the dating world. <laughs> and after experience, after experience of that, they're saying we're not chasing women anymore. Let her put her best foot forward for me. Does that understand? The new homemakers who own businesses movement. So I like the fact that a lot of women are seeing the importance of returning home to be with their children. I love that. I love the fact that a lot of women are coming out of corporate America and working on their femininity and prioritizing home. Here's the trick bag with this. And I don't solely put this on women. I solely put, I, I kind of put, lay this at the feet of men too. There are women who feel like, well, I want to be at home with my children. In other words, I want to exit the corporate world, a corporate job. I want to exit that part. And I don't want to be solely responsible for the bills. I do want a provider, but I want to have my own money, right? That is going to be problematic for a traditional structure. I'm not going to go into that right now, but that is problematic mindset. If money is important to you, then keep working because a traditional structure cannot work without you trusting him to handle his business. So how this plays out is, and, I, and I've, I've talked about this ad nauseum on Clubhouse when I actually did live marriageability rooms where we actually talked to women and we dissected point after point after point after point about what they wanted in marriage. And I probably should do another one of those type style conversations soon. But a lot of those conversations, the women said, well, I would be at home, but I need my own money. Well, nothing's wrong with that till you get to the point where it's built out of trust, where that's that type of mindset comes from you don't trust him to pay bills. That's not going to work in a traditional structure home. What you're going to find yourself doing is going to get a job to cover things because you don't trust him. So you're just kind of a cat chasing your own tail with that. And I'm just going to hit that. I'm not going to go deep into that. I do have a broadcast coming up about female breadwinner. But women who want to start businesses at home and coming from someone who owned their own business and did very, very well prior to marriage. I, my husband is fine with me continuing that, but for some women want to start businesses after they get married and they want to come off the job and so forth and so on. Nothing's wrong with that. You're talking to someone who does it. I mean, Tony is very, very uh, supportive of the inner beauty movement. I mean, he funded the app. Okay. Like he is totally supportive of me. Right. Um, so, so I'm not saying that women who are homemakers cannot work. As a matter of fact, I'm working on, I'm actually writing something and it's, I'm going to launch it. I'm going to try to get this out here before May that helps women come out of corporate America and start their own businesses, whatever it is, whether it's a brick of martyr or whatever, a lot of you need to come out of corporate America. That's the only way you're going to get any kind of soft life, femininity, whatever you need to. If you're like me, if you're like me, 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 Nicole Michelle, you need to come out of corporate America because it was physically making me sick working in corporate America. It just wasn't my, it wasn't my jam. But some of you need to come out and I will create a curriculum for you, like step by step of how to do that without coming out and struggling, right? Some people came out of corporate America, then had to go back because they didn't have a strategy and they didn't have a business savvy. They didn't have anybody coaching them or showing them how to do it. I'm going to help women, specifically traditional women, really cultivate and start their own business and really hit this thing. But the problem comes in when you tell your husband, and I've said this before, but I think I've only said it on Clubhouse. When you promise your husband, hey, I'm going to be a traditional wife. 
I'm going to stay at home. I'm going to start my own business, but I'm also <clears throat> going to help with bills. That's problematic. Well, Nicole, what's wrong with helping out with bills if I make money from my nothing? Nothing, but when you tell a man that you promise to go half on the mortgage or you promise that you're going to be able to do pay certain amount of bills every month, they expect you to do that because that is what you negotiated. And as a business owner, I can tell you in the very first few years, if you're not sure of how to run a business, you're going to hit really low lows and really high highs. And sometimes you don't even get high highs. I'm telling you what I know. And when you t commit yourself to say, hey, whether I have a $20,000 weekend or a $200, uh, $200 month, I'm still going to pay the same bills. When you commit yourself to that and you don't come through, you're letting your family down and he gets to use that as leverage against you. Not only that, but you're just replacing the corporate job with your home job. Okay, the inner beauty movement is never supposed to replace me being a full time paralegal. It's never supposed to be that. The only pressure I have is the pressure I put on myself because I'm a producer like that. <laughs> when it comes to something, I put my mind to it. I have deadlines because if I don't do deadlines, it won't get done. That's just me. That's just my personality. I need a structure. That's me coming from the legal community where everything is structured. So I'm structured. So I run my business structure, right? By this date, this needs to be done. By this date, this needs to be done, right? And I really get on myself if I push a date, right? But I do, for the most part, that's what I try to stick to, right? That's just my personality coming from the legal field. So if you don't have a structure like that, and you don't understand business and how to run it and all the intricacies, the taxes you have to pay and, and all it, it I'm, when I tell you from A to Z, it's a lot. People just think you just log on, post a link, make money. And for a lot of people, they do it and it's wrong and they end up having to deal with Uncle Sam and all of these other things. <laughs> when I tell you it's a lot to it, you can't just slap a bit. Oh, yeah, I'm a business owner. Yeah, you can do that and you can work through cash out, but you've promised your husband that you would make a certain amount of money and that you would contribute toward the bills. I don't like tell. I don't tell. I've never told women to do that. Do not commit yourself, especially if you have a business. Do not commit to paying bills because when those low, low months come, you're still on the hook. And if you don't manage money, if you don't do what's right, he has to cover that. Now he has his lip stuck out about why you didn't cover the bills. And basically a lot of these at home homemakers who make money from home, it sounds like it's just replacing corporate America. It's just, it's just replacing a corporate job. If it's not done correctly. And most of the time it's not because I'm telling you as someone who does not have small children, I do. It is just me and my husband. And I get overwhelmed trying to keep up with social media, trying to keep up with my audience, trying to keep up with an app, trying to keep up with just weekly lives because I, I really want to do more lives. But until I do some more stuff, that's not going to happen. Do you understand how that happens? And then people, <laughs> I can't even imagine having small kids trying to do that. I just, I cannot even imagine having toddlers hanging off of me trying to do this. Absolutely. Can. And I cannot imagine having told my husband, look, I'm going to contribute towards the bills. And then because I'm overwhelmed that month or because the kids were sick or because I didn't perform that well that month, or I didn't get enough sales or I didn't bake enough pies that month. I'm at a deficit. And now that's creating a riff in my marriage. Ladies, I highly recommend if you're going to be a homemaker and have a business from home, you do not commit that income to the house. And I'm listening. And why? She's literally switching out corporate, her corporate job for her home. Worrying about the house and the children and all of that is a full time job. OK, I'm, I keep telling you all that is a full time job. That is a full time job. I can't even imagine having toddlers. Listen, 
<laughs> and I'm creeping up on half a century and I can't even imagine having toddlers doing what I do. And I have systems in place to get things done. Can you imagine me having, I've had, I've had a, a, one of, um, um, I, a Instagram content creator who has like a lot of followers reached out to me and we had a one-on-one -on -one zoom and she says, how do you post like that? How do you do that? And I'm like, how do you do what you do? I don't. And I'm just like, oh, girl, you need systems in place. And this is what I'm talking about. This is just social media businesses. But sometimes you have to get and go to an office or you have to go to a kitchen or you have to go to a brick and mortar and do business and you have children at home. But because you've committed it, you've overpromised and committed before you got into the intricacies of business. Now you're committed to that. Now he has something to hold over your head. Businesses are up and down up and down businesses close all the time and then it you have to consider what you're doing what your product is what is it digital is it you know brick and mortar business is it something you have to mail to people people have to you have to sit down and mail that stuff address the labels and all of that stuff and while a toddler needs to be fed <laughs> <laughs> right? Why you have to go pick Timmy and Lisa up from school? This is what I'm talking about. Do not overpromise, ladies. I know some of you feel like, oh, I'm not going to get the ring if I don't promise him that I can bring an income. And I know what this is. A lot of you all would not have gotten the ring had you not told the man, look, I, you know, I want to be a housewife, but I tell you what, I can make money from home. That's the only way you couldn't have gotten married, but don't pass that off on other women. I'm sorry, no hatred, no shade. Don't pass that off on other women because if they listen to me, the money that they make is not going to go towards bills and it shouldn't. You should be worried about those children and that house and your husband, not bills. That defeats the purpose, okay? <laughs> if that's what you're gonna do, just go work and be done with it. Take them to daycare and be done, okay? <laughs> Don't overcommit because what you're gonna find out Ladies, is that running a business is way more difficult than just going to a job. You're going to find that out. But God bless you, though. <laughs> In terms of running a business, it's much easier for me because that's where God was taking me. And this is what I needed to do. And I had to learn from people who know how to do this. Right. But <laughs> listen, it's hard. OK. And if you don't know what you're doing. It's going to be tough, really, 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 really tough. It's not just a matter of posting a link, hope people buy from you, posting a link, hey, I want to sell these products. And you, these orders come in, especially around holidays, these orders come in. You have to fulfill these orders. People come into your business. You don't have time to go home because Timmy has a toothache. You have to stand there and work. Wait, it's your business. It wasn't like when you were you were working for someone else, you can just say, hey, I'm done for today. Well, what's going on? I can't help you. Timmy is sick. I got to go. Right? We were able to do it. Hey, look, Timmy is sick. My son is sick. I have to go. No, when it's your business, you're calling everybody. Can you pick, can you help? Can you do you it's it, you have to do it. It's your business. <laughs> so you know what I mean so even if you have a work from anywhere business it's still you have to do it. like there you know weekends and I'll just be transparent Tony likes to relax on the weekends and I'm like up oh, I have to send this email <laughs> I have this technical issue. I have to deal with this. I have to contact Apple. I have to, I just got an email from Google. They're updating all the apps and there's certain types of certificates we have to have as app developers. And I have to contact my developer. I have to send an email. We have to try, go back and forth. What did Google tell you? What is it? It's, it's work constantly, 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 constantly. You see what I'm saying? So, and I have to explain that to my husband. Look, let me give me 15 minutes. Let me see these emails. <laughs> Let me see what Apple developer is talking about today. Because Apple is constantly updating. They have some new technology coming out. Shout out to all you Apple users. I read an article about Apple. They're getting ready to go to the next level. And so everybody with Apple products and Apple developing, we're having to upgrade. So those of you on the app, look, look forward to upgrades and changes um good changes good changes apple is good about that but 
the point I'm trying to make, ladies, is don't overpromise. If you're going to be a homemaker, a traditional homemaker, be a traditional homemaker. And if you make money from your hobbies, good. You know, maybe, I don't know, use your, your money for vacations or investments or, you know, Christmas gifts and things like that. But don't overcommit your income. And this is not a selfish thing. This is just understanding how business works. And masters of the universe, hedge fund, blue chip type of guys, they understand exactly what I'm talking about. They will know exactly. In other words, they'll be looking at you like, why did you even promise that anyway? <laughs> right? It's only poor people. Sorry. No shade. But poor people will make you over promise. And then when you don't come through and are able to do that, then that's going to be a problem. So no shade, no shade. I just wanted to make sure people understood what we're talking about. Now, last but not least, strategy over plans and lifestyle. Now, I've heard a lot of people across social media say that we don't do strategy. I don't teach strategy. We don't talk about strategy. The reason why I talk about strategy is because we understand what strategy is. And a lot of people equate strategy with game plan, manipulation, and not knowing who you are. Strategy is only bad when you replace femininity with strategy. So some women will skip working on themselves, becoming feminine, and use strategy only to get what they need out of life. We see this all the time. They're all over social media. That is not what we do here. However, I believe in a prepared woman, it always gets what she wants. Being feminine, being sexy, and oozing sex and oozing femininity is cute. That gets you an audience with the man, but it doesn't seal the deal. Still seal the deal. Just like a man needs logic, just he needs emotion he also needs logic and a lot of women have the looks and the femininity down point in terms of how she shows up physically her presentation all of those things are in place but when it comes to understanding who she's supposed to be doing that with lost let me just break this down to you why there's a difference okay uh let's see here strategy is like deciding on the best way to build the tower okay it's about thinking ahead and making a plan okay you might decide that the best strategy is to start with the strong base then stack the blocks carefully to make the tower taller and taller strategy helps you figure out the smartest way to reach a goal so when we teach strategy or i show you strategy here it's to show you how to reach a goal. In other words, for example, when we did marriageability rooms, the strategy is understanding which type of man I should be dating. Should I date this age group or that age group? And why shouldn't I date the other age group? Should I date men in the South or in the North? Should I date men that are older or younger? Should I make date men with kids or no? That is a strategy, that is understanding. Before I even go deep with this guy, he doesn't hit all the metrics. So instead of wasting time, I know this is going to be a dead end based on who I am, my background, my experiences. I know that this is not the way to go. Being just feminine does not give you that understanding. There are a lot of feminine, beautiful women still single, still trying to figure it out. Why? Because they're doing all of those things, feminine, uh, being feminine and sexy and luring for the wrong men. And they stay single forever. I get down to the nitty gritty in my mentorship. We get down to that. We don't go into the archetypes and all that. No, why are you single? Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. You don't have time for me to go over what you wear and what that, all of that is dependent on what kind of guy you like. But overall, we spend time on cultivating you as a woman and helping you get out there. And so by the time you come through working with me, vetting is second nature. You could probably teach a course in vetting when you get done with me. Because you have a strategy. You know, okay, wait, 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 wait. This doesn't make sense. This is the type of woman I am. This is the type of man he is. There's no time. There's no reason to waste my time when I know that we're incompatible. We're incompatible. Okay, the difference between a st uh, strategy and a plan is planning is like making a step-by-step -step guide 
for building the tower, okay? It's about breaking down the big task into smaller tasks and deciding what you need to do at each step. Planning helps you know exactly what blocks to use, how many you need, and in what order to stack them. It's like having a map that tells you exactly what to do, when to do it. So strategy is about choosing the best way to do something. Choosing the best way to position yourself in the marriage market. That's what we teach in strategy over here. Okay, women who manipulate men, when they use the word strategy, that's exactly what they mean. When they mean strategy, we use strategy for the word for what it's meant. It's about choosing the best way to do something, to reach your goal. And that is to position yourself in the marriage market to be found like a Ruth. All right. Naomi helped Ruth position herself. That was a strategy. Thank you, Lord. The Bible was it kind of lays it out. Naomi gave Ruth a strategy. She said, listen, listen he's going to be out there partying. He's out there with the people from the city chilling and he's going to fall asleep. And this is the area he falls asleep. And according to custom, if he wakes up and this is there and they're there, then he sees the woman there Then he has to marry you. He has to be responsible for you. In other words, this is how you get him. That's a strategy. Now, when you replace strategy with femininity, that's problematic. When you put, replace strategy with not being a, a good woman and not being the best person you possibly can to show up in the market, that's not what I'm talking about. That's something else, okay? And you're skipping a step. And I think that's what people mean when they say strategy. That's not what we mean. We mean knowing exactly what kind of man I'm compatible with, exactly what kind of man. You won't be compatible with every single guy, but that avatar of a guy is who you're going to be compatible with. Because it's women who say, well, I'm flexible. I can date whoever. Those are the women that stay single forever because they end up chasing a man that they're not compatible with. Uh, for example, a woman that is a free spirit. Okay. You can't date a Christian conservative. Okay. <laughs> that's strategy. You know, going in, he's Christian conservative. Yeah, I like him. I'm attracted to him, but that's not going to work. We're not going to be compatible. Therefore, no matter how feminine she is, how sexy she is, they're not going to be compatible. And that's going in knowing not to waste your time, okay? A plan is a step-by-step -step way to execute a strategy. So I don't really go into a step-by-step. -step. I just help you understand who, what kind of man you're most compatible with. Well, Miss Nicole, I want to be, uh, you know, I want to date an executive. I want to be an executive wife. Okay, are you ready to compete? It's highly competitive for those guys uh, because it's not a lot of them to go around. Are you ready to compete? A lot of women fall off right there. Nope, I'm not ready to compete for that guy. I'm not ready for that fast-paced life. I'm an introvert, so therefore I'm not going to like going to those high-end parties. Okay, that might not be the guy for you. That's a strategy. That's knowing exactly what you do. Being feminine is not enough to understand who you're compatible with. Knowing you is just a part of it. That's is incomplete. Knowing you is a great deal of it, a great bit of it. But knowing the right guy that should even have an audience with you is the next part. Both strategy and planning are important to help you reach your goal successfully. Does that make sense, ladies? So I don't, I don't, you know, shy away from the fact that I teach women. I don't teach you strategy, but I do give you one. Absolutely. You should know which guys that you're absolutely going to be wasting time with. You should know that. You shouldn't be wasting time with a 50-year-old or a 60-year-old man because he has money and then come to find out he's sick. So now you're a, ger a geriatric bride. <laughs> you like to go out on the town. He likes to sit at home and watch 2020. Nothing wrong with that, but you're incompatible. Now, just being feminine and just knowing yourself was just half the battle. The other battle is, okay, what specific type of personality man am I best mesh with? That's why we teach strategy over here. Now, let's get into the topic. Gracious words are like a honeycomb sweetness to the soul and health to the body and that's in proverbs 16 and 24 a woman should always be using gracious words 
because it's like honeycomb, honeycomb sweetness, right? We can use our communication to affect change, to influence, to move mountains. And communication does not have to be manipulative. Feminine communication is just all of the things we're going to talk about. Femininity in conversation, understanding how feminine communication styles contribute to bonding and nurturing in relationships. If, excuse me, before now, you did not look at communication as a form of bonding with a man. You should absolutely do after this conversation. And for those of you who stick to the very, very end, I will show you how to communicate online with men who slide in your inbox or you slide in their inbox, okay? I'm going to show you how to, how to communicate with them to get them to talk to you and keep their attention, all right, at the end when we're talking about online, okay? Femininity in conversation is the balance of warmth empathy and intelligence in conversation, all right? So it has to have all of those. It needs to be warm, empathetic, not just about you, intelligence in the conversation, all right? There's three forms or three types of conversation that we're gonna focus on today. I'm gonna hit on, and then we're gonna move on. Small talk, right? Small talk is networking in professional settings. We do small talk in social scenarios. We do small talk. Maybe we're standing in line at Dunkin' and Donuts and, um, or we're standing in line at Starbucks or something like that. We may st start up a really small chat with someone who's in close proximity and it's, it's not forced, but it's there because you're all uh, there for the same purpose, right? Professional settings is where you're networking, you're building rapport with people, and you're having conversations. Small talk can be mastered fairly easy. And basically, it's when you're making small talk with people, you want to stick to light subjects and you want to keep it away from getting too personal, right? You want to keep it on light subjects, stay away from politics, religion anything politically charged, anything that's emotionally charged and triggering for yourself. You want to stay away from that. And you want to stay away from keeping it personal. What I like to do is talk about the weather, talk about local topics that are happening now in the local area. And I like to focus on the purpose of why we are gathered in that particular scenario. So that's what I like to do is keep it that way. When you're networking, you always want to stick to clusters of people. And when you're walking into a space and to keep from looking awkward and feeling awkward, navigate and kind of move towards or gravitate towards clusters of people and kind of stand behind someone kind of like diagonally, just a little bit, not breathing down their neck, but just a little bit close enough to where you can hear what's going on in that little group there, but not close enough to where you kind of like on top of someone and listen. And when you're able to jump in there, without talking over someone or contribute, just kind of jump in there and say something and contribute to the conversation. Make it light, make it pleasant, keep a smile on your face. That's how you work a room. And then you go to the next little pod and then go to the next little pod and go to the next little pod. Be able to do that, keep it light, keep it short, mention you know something about the weather or sports or something like that. And, and keep it moving. Very, very light. Very. That's how you circulate like a butterfly. People who are socially awkward will be in their phones. They'll be towards all hanging around, hanging out by the food. Um, and those of you on my other platforms, hit the link at the top so you can get the rest of this. I'm going to go silent, hit the link at the top so you can get the rest. So um, when you're in social scenarios, you want to do the same. You want to stick to pertinent topics. When you are out with the masters of the universe or your man or family members or just whoever, but we're talking about men, when you're out with men and you're talking, <clears throat> make sure you are not over talking him and make sure that your contributions to the uh, the conversation is on topic. Don't make it about you. Don't be combative. And we're going to talk about that. Crafting strong relationships. 
is the next type of conversation. This is where you need to hone in on your ability to bring people in and keep having conversations with them, addressing misconceptions, avoiding dumb bimbo role. Please stop acting like a dumb bimbo, like you don't know what's going on, like you don't know things. People know if, you know, they may not know what you do or anything about you, but they can kind of sense when you're playing dumb on purpose, which loses you a lot of credibility, okay? You don't want to do that. So don't play the dumb bimbo because you think that's going to appeal to men. I know there are women who, you know, be unassuming, act like a dumb bunny. You don't need to act dumb to have a man attracted to you and keep his attention. He actually wants you to contribute to the conversation. You just don't need to be combative with it and act like you're a know-it-all and you're smarty pants. Just be you. Just be easy. Just be calm and nice and sweet, right? So articulate what it is you need to say. And this is extremely important in the dating phase and the courting phase is what you want to do is your conversation should always be getting deeper as the conversation, I'm sorry, as the connection grows. That's what keeps you bonded to a man without sex is your conversation is one of the techniques. Um, a lot of women do not perfect conversation and they are absolutely boring. All right. They're boring on the phone. They're boring on Zoom calls. They're boring in person. They're either too talkative or not talkative enough. And when they do talk is monotone. They're talking like this. They have no, no body, no substance. They just talk like this. And then they say what they have to say and then they go on mute. And then they're forcing the man to ask them to talk. And they don't know about anything else to talk about but gossip. Can you understand why a man tunes out and doesn't call you again? Does that make sense, ladies? Have something to talk about. Be strong on a very, a very, a myriad of topics, right? Don't just um, want to talk about gossip and other people because that lowers your status in his eyes when you criticize other people, especially women in his, in his eyes, even celebrities, just have a conversation where you're just being easy, bounce off of him. For example, and this is great for small talk. You're meeting a guy, you're on the phone with him. This is the phone, first time speaking. And he says, hello, how are you? Well, hello, handsome. How are you? I'm great. What's going on? How was your day? Beautiful. Oh, it was marvelous. I couldn't wait to hear from you, but um, I just had a wonderful day. Things just went well. Or if it wasn't good, it was one of those days. But hey, it's brighter now that I'm speaking to you. Got it. Right then and there. You're not boring. This is what most women will do. Hello, beautiful. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. How are you? Oh, I'm good. I had a great day. How was yours? Oh, uh, it was okay. Well, uh, what'd you do today? Um, you know, just regular day. I just went to work and boring, 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 boring. Let's try this again. And if anybody wants to come up here and do a role play, that will be the the best thing. And I'll, I'll be the girl and you be the guy if that's easier. <laughs> I won't put that pressure on you if you want to, I, to make it easier, right? But um, especially when we're doing role playing, it's, sometimes people get it when it's two people. Like, But if he's the guy, he's calling you. Hey, what's up, Devin? How are you? Hey, how are you? I'm fine. Well, how was your day, Devin? It was good. What did you do? Oh, it was just a regular day. Boring, 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 boring. Hello, beautiful. How you doing? Well, hello, handsome. How are you? Oh, I'm fine, baby. What's going on? What you doing today? Well, oh, man. I had the most wonderful night's sleep last night. Then I went to work, and I just floated through the day because I knew I was going to talk to you, your handsome self tonight. What's up with you? Got him, got him, got him. You see how that works? And now he wants to continue talking to him. So now after that, let's say you all have been dating for a while and he calls you. What's up, girl? What you doing? 
oh, I'm just sauntering through my house and figuring out what I'm going to make for dinner tonight. Really? What are you cooking tonight? Oh, I was thinking about steak or something. What do you think I should cook? And then turn on the FaceTime and let him see you walking in the kitchen and, you know, walking around. Bring him into your world. Oh, well, I was thinking about making some steak, potatoes. I don't know. Well, what do you think? If you don't know what to say, ask a question. Rule of thumb, that's always worked for me. If I don't know what to say, I ask a question. So if he asks me something off guard, uh, let's say, well, what are you thinking about making? Or, you know, you eat steak like that or something like that. Well, why do you ask that? Or what made you ask me that? I always stick away, stick, uh, avoid why did you ask me that to what made you ask me that, which is the same question, just phrased a little bit different. And it doesn't make them think that you are afraid of the question. It's an old legal trick that attorneys do, uh, you know, try to make people think that you're afraid of the question to put doubt in other people's minds. You don't want to put doubt in his mind. Just that's a weird question. What made you ask me that? Or that's a strange question. That was out of the blue. What made you ask me that? Anytime you don't know what to say or it's kind of weird, don't try and fumble your way through an answer or a reply. Just go, I don't understand the question. I do that a lot. I do that even on social media. I, I'm not following. Can you rephrase? What did you mean by that? I don't want to jump to conclusions. I don't want to put words in your mouth. But what are you saying? This goes well in when you're having altercations. Well, <laughs> that's pretty tense. I'm not sure I'm getting what you're saying, and I don't want to get mad about the wrong thing. Can you repeat that? Can you put that another way? Because I'm taking it this way. And allow him to flesh it out. Don't assume. Don't jump to conclusions. Ask them questions. And I used to be bad at that too. When I was younger, just to be transparent, I would just make a whole lot of assumptions mentally. And then I would respond based on my wrong assumptions, which caused another layer of <laughs> mis miscommunication and misunderstanding because I'm responding off of what I think he said, not what he actually said. And a lot of times, if you are in your head, if you are in your emotions, if you are triggered, if you're soft about something and he says something and you know that's a trigger for you or that's difficult for you, what a lot of women would do, you're afraid of asking for clarification. Ladies, communication guidelines 101, if you are unsure, just you don't know, ask for clarification, even in professional settings. People appreciate that rather than you jump into conclusions. Don't be loud and wrong and don't be quick to respond and be wrong because nothing makes you look more inept than when you respond and wrong. So it's best to just say, could you clarify that what you meant? Even if you're supposed to be the smartest person in the room, it's still okay to get clarification. Nine times out of 10, everybody wants to say it again anyway. <laughs> so just, can you repeat your question? I didn't quite get it, I didn't understand, or I just wanna make sure that I'm understanding you clearly. I just want to make sure I understand you the way you meant it before I respond. That always slows people down. And it also shows that you're a good listener. Does that, does that help? <clears throat> All right. She says, Hey, Anna, if you're codependent and feed off others energy, how can you develop the exciting part of you individually so you don't get nervous and boring on the spot? Because as feminine women, we we do feed off of other people's, but don't make them, don't let them control your energy. For example, you walk into a room and you walk in and you're beautiful and you get a whole bunch of, a whole lot of hating eyes and hatred darts because you're the most beautiful woman in the room, right? You can encompass that energy and now all of a sudden you're angry you're uptight you're jealous acting your energy has completely changed because of their energy or you can take that and go 
That means I must be beautiful. That means I must be hot. I'm getting a lot of attention. You can choose how you take that energy and still saunter around the room and go from, from one little small group to the next group and still work that room. Even when they're watching you, hating you and hope you choke on your drink. You can still do that and still be wonderful. So ladies, don't let other people's energy take you down. You influence their energy. I like to do that. This takes practice and it's easier said than done. I get it, but it so benefits you in the long run. So when you're in a, a conversation and it seems like people are being personal, they probably are. And you can just laugh it off. Oh, you're so sweet. Oh, bless your heart, which is my favorite uh, retort to people who are trying to be smart, alecky, or trying to take shots. Oh, bless your heart, dear. God bless you. May God's blessings be upon you. And then move on about the room. Find your little phrase that you you know people are going to throw shade at you, Anna. So when people throw shade at you, find you a saying. It could be, bless your heart. Uh, <laughs> I'm a Southern girl, so that's, you know, hey, bless your heart, baby. All right. I'm a Southern girl and I'm a church girl. So we love that saying. Bless your heart, baby. God bless you, honey. Go on about your business, honey. You, you know, we love saying stuff like that. So you find your phrase that fits your personality for when people throw shade at you. And it's not throwing shade back at them, but it's acknowledging, hey, I see you throwing shade and I'm not going to let you affect my energy like that and move on. Say that saying and then move on and keep it smiling. Keep it, keep it cordial keep it beautiful and then that also makes you the type of person people want to be around wait who is this pretty girl who i just took a huge shot at her and she just blessed my heart uh, excuse me <laughs> people want to know more about you and a lot of times depending on how you grew up where you were <laughs> Miss Belfort says, she says, take care, peace out. Uh, whatever your phrase is, your fit, you fit your personality, get that phrase together. But uh, depending on how we grew up and things like that, we are so quick to jump to an attitude, start cursing, get combative. Don't do it. Don't give it to, we see this play out in reality TV. And I wish like sometimes they would be like, I wish I could talk to some of them because you are way too pretty to be talking like that. Like if I, if I named their names right now, you would be, you would agree with me. Like, why are you even talking like that? You were so pretty. Like you just totally lowered your status when you opened your mouth, when you said that, right? We see that all the time play out in, 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 in reality TV. They do it all the time. And what I'm saying is you don't take on their energy. You put their in You put your energy on them. You use your feminine, your femininity power to influence them. Don't let them over influence you. Okay. Does that make sense? D the same thing with men. A man came on my IG today saying something crazy. He didn't, he didn't, uh, he didn't agree with my post that I had about men purposely getting women pregnant because they need a place to stay. He didn't like that. And he started cursing and I said, well, we don't allow cursing or we don't curse on in this space. I said something like that, but I appreciate your comment. We don't curse here, but I appreciate your comment. And then I said something else after that. So the point is, I let him know, look, first of all, don't curse at me. <laughs> While I'm typing, I'm thinking, who are you to curse at me? That's number one. Number two, because <laughs> because I think cursing is the ghetto of communication, personally. I know some women embrace that as, a, but it's 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 the hood of conver it's conversation. It's cursing, um, and I know sometimes you just feel like it. You know, you stub your toe. You're like, Ugh, right? I, I get it, but try to avoid that in in public spaces. It just totally lowers your status. It really does. And so I, I, I was typing that and I'm going, who are you to talk to me like this? But I said, we don't curse in this space. That's number one. Number two, thank you for commenting. So I'm acknowledging his stupid comment. Thank you for commenting. And then I went on and said what I had to say. It's, it's up there now. 
It's my post that I posted today. You can see it for yourself to, to see the example of when people do that. And I didn't let him affect my energy because the old Nicole that didn't know the Lord would have been Ninja. Who are you talking? <laughs> who do you think you talking to? First of all, let me get you together. And it would have been head turning. And, and I, I know me, I know me. I've come a long, long way. Right, because that's just how you are when you're not in your feminine and everything triggers you. Everything doesn't have to trigger you. Don't let people trigger you. And it's hard to do that. That's why I stay off of Clubhouse because those people literally, they trigger me. For example, they had a room today about uh, why do men want to humble women? And I go, okay, so this is another room where men are displaying their jealousy of women. Just, uh, I got to get out of this space because it was triggering me. And I know that if they put me on stage, I was going to say something. Uh, <laughs> and I'm just like, why, why, just why, why? So that's what I'm talking about when I mean affecting the energy, the space, right? You affect them. Don't let them affect you. And if it gets to the point, well, it's that bad, you leave. Just go ahead and leave sustaining companionship this is the other part of uh, other type of communication that keeps the relationship good this is the part of communication that keeps a man coming back to you calling you even when you haven't had sex yet all right it's good communication now the other part to this is he has to want to be with you and be open and emotionally available to want to stick around and get to know a woman without having sex with her. So that part needs to be in place. Outside of that, the conversation needs to be bomb. You should be able to be on the phone with him and have a conversation flow from topic to topic to topic, right? Make sure you watch out for I statements. Make sure you don't make too many I statements. In the very beginning of getting to know a man, you typically ask a lot of questions about him because not only are you vetting, but you want him to feel safe enough to open up about himself. And then you start asking a little bit more deeper, conver uh, deep, deeper questions. But as you, you're getting to know him, you know him, you have a rapport with him. You can even say he's your man, you all are courting and things like that. The conversations need to be a little bit more substantive, right? You need to be asking him, what's going on? What's on your mind? Why does that trigger you? Why are you upset? You should be having conversations about what triggers him, what upsets him, what he likes, what he dislikes. Nothing is more disappointing when I have a conversation with women and they say, hey, show me how to do X, Y, and Z with this guy. And I'm like, wait hold up, you don't know anything about this guy? We are putting the court before the horse. There are certain things you need to know about his temperament. You need to know what, what moves him, what shakes him, what is his passion, what upsets him, what triggers him. You should know these things before you can even start thinking about him being your husband. Does that make sense? Right? Yes, someone says a small, a small vocabulary makes some people curse. Absolutely. Right. Increase your vocabulary. Hold on just one second. Let me send a message uh, really quick. I want to make sure. All right. So little. All right. Okay. So sustaining a, a companionship, your conversation needs to be on point. You all are not going to be this young, sexy couple forever having babies and so forth and so on. You all are going to grow old and that conversation needs to be good. How do you think people stay married 20, 30, 40 years? It's not because they never have a conversation together. It's because they do converse. And a lot of times, even when someone is sick, that conversation is on point to the point where they still are able to bond and connect with one, with one another, even through conversation. All right. So I'm going to give you some general tips that apply to married women and single women. This is good for keeping his attention without sex. Flirting is good, um, but it needs substance. Otherwise it's going to fall flat into the superficial. 
You want to know why a man doesn't call you back. You want to know why he puts you in rotation. You want to know why he doesn't call you back, why he's fishy, why he disappears, all of these things. It's because uh, flirting and being sexy and attractive is so good, but it's not enough to sustain a relationship. Again, men are logical. Remember, we talked about, about this in the beginning. Men are logical and emotions change. They evolve and he needs logic behind the decision to be with you. And if the only thing he can think of is that you're sexy and beautiful, that's not enough, right? This is why a lot of women fall back on their careers. Well, I do this and I'm this and I'm this and I have this degree and I do this and I have this business and I have that and that and that. They fall back on that because they don't, they like one trick ponies. It's either sex and my degrees. That's all they have to keep a man interested. And honestly, that doesn't work for traditional men. I don't need to tell you that. But honestly, for most men, even if he's not traditional, that's not enough, all right? He needs to see your heart. He needs to see what makes you cry. What is your passion besides work, <laughs> besides looking good? What, what, what is it about you that made you you? Was it the time you fell down uh, in, in elementary school? Was it the time you didn't make the, the, the debate team in high school? Like, what makes you you? You need to be emotionally available. Not just him, but he, you need to be emotionally available for good conversation to work. A lot of times, a lot of women are stale with conversation simply because they have a heart up a wall up against their heart so their conversation stays nothing but superficial this is why he's talking about sex with you on the second phone call this is why he's talking about taking you to his house on the second date because he doesn't see any substance there right and guys will try this with everybody so don't feel like it's always your fault but you can kind of this is where strategy comes out is choosing men to spend time with that tend to have the same things or same interest and goals that you have. So you don't run into those guys that don't want you want what you want. Right. And so you can go out and do your best. And if he's not open to you, your conversations will be surface. And that's when your strategy is to leave him where he is because he's obviously not opening up. Right. But if you're open and he's open, the conversation is going to flow and both of you will ascend the vulnerability ladder, right? You'll go from strangers to very familiar with each other. That's the way it's supposed to be. And communication is the greatest feminine tool I can ever talk to you about. Because if you don't get this element together you'll never get a ring your friendships will suffer your connections with your children will suffer and your husband if you get one he, it'll suffer too and if you're married and you stop talking you've just introduced problems into your marriage right you always want to keep your conversation on point always connect with your husband always 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 connect that's just as important as going out on dates and sex is connecting with your husband right conversation is what keeps emotional bond keeps the emotional bond between two people strong enough through the years okay conversation uh can make or break a relationship but it can solidify a couple's attraction for uh attraction for you and uh conversation is nothing but your personality manifested or the personification of your personality right you cannot have you cannot have great conversation without showing your personality and you can't show your personality if you don't know who you are so it goes back to becoming uh the woman of substance so those of you who have not watched that go back and watch that it's one of my highest viewed videos to date is becoming a woman of substance. You cannot go through this journey of femininity and attracting the best men from the best families without becoming a woman of substance. Can't happen, won't happen. It doesn't mean you have to be completely, have everything right 100% before you can get in a uh, 
a meaningful relationship. That's not what I'm saying. But you definitely need to be further along on the woman of substance path in order to show your personality in your conversation, right? Right? Communication is, is nothing but the personality personified. And he needs to be open. He needs to be open emotionally as well as you. Very good people can have horrible conversation and can ruin their ability to socialize and, uh, and get promotions and get invitations to parties. I think a lot of times, a lot of men online are screaming and hollering about women because they haven't been socialized. I talked about this last week when I talked about the people that criticize the black church or criticize church, period. Church is the first place where people get to speak in front of an audience and not be graded on it. It's at church. You get a microphone, you're in the, the, the Christmas play, you're saying a speech, you're talking to people. That is the first opportunity you get to public speaking. That's why it's easy for me to just speak off. The, a lot of times I'm not even speaking from notes. I'm just talking off talking. I do that a lot on clubhouse and just, I'm just talking, right? I do that on IG, just talk and talk and talk and talk to be able to formulate your ideas without it sounding like rambling. is a skill that we developed in church and school doesn't always give you that socialization right it's church where they kind of encourage you to speak come out of your shell talk to people uh make friends converse move about that's the first place you get the socialization and i think a lot of people didn't have that socialization all they had was school god bless them and you know public school if you went to public school okay it's free so what does that tell you right <laughs> Anything free is not always free on the back end. We know that, right? If you went to a private school, you know what they did? They told you how to socialize and communicate. Why? Because those are the soft skills you need to run a business. You need to get investors in your business. You need those skills for the business world. You need that. And that's why a lot of people are not successful. And that's what's going on with a lot of men. They don't know how to talk to women. And a lot of women, to be fair, don't know how to talk to men. And this is why we're having this conversation so that you know how to converse with men and not make it so difficult because it's really not. But understanding, becoming a woman of substance brings out your personality. And in conversation, that personality needs to be out to the forefront. He needs to be getting to know you. The conversation needs to have your personality in it. Who are you? What are you about, right? The feminine, we need, uh, we use talking um, to bond and nurture with others. There's no way you can bond with others without talking. There's no way you can do that. There's no way you can com um, converse with people and not develop a bond over time. This is the important reason why you have to get a man to bond with you through talking. If he doesn't talk and you're doing all the talking, red flag, right? Remember I said men don't test, they read you. A lot of times they don't even have to read you. They can just listen to what you say and they learn how to play you based on that. They're very savvy when trying to get your panties. So a lot of women over talk and over share, and then they end up dealing with a man. And sometimes it's just, oh man, this is just way too easy. The way she's talking, the word, the way she's using words, the phrases. Oh, I, uh, this is going to be easy. I know how to get to this woman. Does that make sense? Communication can build or tear down or plant seeds. Words are powerful, right? Remember important events, people, places that are important to him right? When well, Nicole, shouldn't he be worrying about things about me? Sure. If he's into you, he's going to do all of these things I'm telling you to do. If he's into you at some point, some men are developing their communication skills, but I assure you if they've been successful with women at any point, they know how to communicate. They do. Men shut down with women they don't want. So if you're coming across a man who's just, you know, cotton mouth. He doesn't really want to speak to you. He's rushing you off the phone. He doesn't want to spend time. He doesn't want to answer questions. He's getting, you know, antsy about questions and diving deep into conversations. That's someone that's really not into you. He's letting you know he's not really investing too much into this because he doesn't 
want to spend time building that bond. Okay. And we talked about playing the dumb bimbo. It doesn't get you taken seriously. Um, it does make people not want to respect you, right? It's, it has nothing to do with you being a woman. It has nothing to do with you being sexy or, uh, you know, attractive or anything like that. It has everything to do with nobody wants to talk to somebody dumb. And they definitely don't want to talk to a woman plain dumb, right? That's the quickest way to get played and just <laughs> not taken seriously is by you playing stupid when they know you're not stupid. Okay. Um, if you're smart, speak like you're smart. If you're educated, speak like you're educated. Just don't come off like, you know, it all don't come off. Like you are the expert at everything. Don't just be down to earth, be inviting, be a conversationalist. Don't come off. Like you are the authority over everything. And that's when people start to feel like, okay, she's using her education to be a weapon. That's not what you want to do. That is to only accentuate who you are and to make you a powerful person uh, in connecting. But you don't want to rely on that solely as your conversation stick, as your, um, your education. Think about what you're going to say before you say it. There's certain questions you know you're going to get asked in the first conversations right the first few conversations with me and you know you're going to be asked these questions have answers okay don't make it sound like it's recorded or um memorized but make it you know he's going to ask do you have children have you been married before where do you live what do you do he you know he's going to ask these questions have a very very unique way of answering it right that's what makes you a good conversation well uh uh well uh why you ask me that Okay, first of all, it sounds like you're hiding something. It sounds like you're getting ready to lie to me. That's what men are thinking. So you know he's going to ask where you work. Well, you know, right now I'm in between jobs, so I'm working at Walmart as a cashier. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, life is lifing, so I'm doing what I got to do. What do you do? You see how you did that and you stayed light? A person who is not staying light is going to go, well, um, why you ask me that? Well, I don't like to talk about my job because I don't think that's important. No, answer the question. You know, hey, look, life is life and I'm doing what I got to do. I'm working at Walmart as a cashier right now. But what's up? Right. Men appreciate that. They're like, whoa, that's cool. You know what I mean? But when you go to him and uh, uh, well, uh, 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 get an idea, get an attitude, okay, obviously she's not cool with who she is and where she is, right? Do you have children? Why do you ask that question? Uh, well, no, but uh, no, just say, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Do you? Flip it. You have questions? I, I do. Absolutely. I have three beautiful children. Do you have children? Flip it. Okay. If you, there's a scene in Game of Thrones, I think it's the first episode, where Tyrion is speaking to Jon Snow and he says, if you don't want people using things against you, be cool with it. Bring, you bring it up. You'll be okay with it. And they can never use it against you. So ladies, if you know people are going to ask questions that are tough for you, have answers for it. Don't dodge it. Ask answers because what, like I said, they don't test you, they read you. So once they figure out, oh, that's the issue for her. I know she's lying. That's the issue for her. Let me keep tapping that because that's triggering her. That's what he means. Let me keep uh, uh, triggering her because that's how I get her out of herself because she just let me know that that's an issue for her by you lying by you, you know, lying about your past, lying about how you did things. Me and know when you lie, come on now. Why do you think he didn't call you back? Why do you think it's been six years and he hasn't asked you to marry him? He knows you're lying. <laughs> if you do it my way. Yeah. I have three kids. I'm a divorcee. What about you? When I went out on dates, when I was dating, after my divorce, that was a topic for me because I was a divorcee with three kids. And I was like, yeah, I'm a divorcee with three kids. What about you? With three beautiful children. What about you? 
Oh, absolutely. I have two beautiful girls and one precocious son. What about you? Now he can't use that against me. You know what it is. And if I'm not your cup of tea, why did you ask me out in the first place? Or why, you know what I mean? Don't ask me out if that's the issue. Ladies, you have to be okay with who you are. Because if you're not okay, they're going to exploit that. And it's not you or your past or what's going on. It's you not being comfortable with it. Hey, look, I come from difficult straits. But look at me now. Right? Hey, I couldn't always eat like this, but look at me now. What's on the menu, baby? I want some snails and I want some caviar and whatever. Be okay with it. Men want a woman that's okay with herself because they need you to be okay with them. <laughs> and if you're not okay with you, that's problematic. Okay? Ladies, here's another tip for you. When it comes to conversation, don't panic. If you say the wrong thing, you misspeak, you misunderstood, you miscommunicated, you misspoke a word, go, I know I totally messed up that word. I've done that here on a live. I totally butcher a word. And I'll go, I know I butchered that word, right? <laughs> I know I, I did, I'm sorry, right? It's okay to mess up. It's okay to misspeak, it's okay you're human it happens but when you do it or if you misspeak or just say oh I'm sorry I did not mean to step on your toes or be disrespectful or I totally butcher that bitch uh but see I just butcher butcher the word see what I mean it happens I butchered that word I'm so sorry right it happens it's okay relax women I'm sorry men love women who are relaxed People like people who are relaxed. If people talk to you and you get every word right, you get every sentence right, you get every post right, it's like, oh, okay, you're cool, but okay. Guess what? He'll date the flawed woman faster than he'll date the perfected woman. You know why? Because people like people who are okay with themselves and they're just okay and they're just them. And they're relaxed and they let people be people. Be able to add to any conversation insights and opinions. Avoid being opinionated and judgmental. Be, be well versed in, in, on trendy topics and everything. As you start to get to know a man, you need to be well versed on topics. You need to know who's running for president. You need to know what their platforms are. Not just, I'm just voting for this candidate and that's it. Okay, well, that's very close-minded. There's no room to have a conversation with you because you don't know how to have a conversation because you don't know anything about anything else. I love to go and have conversations with other people who are completely on the left. I love that. They get to hear my side and I get to hear their side. Do we agree? Never. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good conversation and I get to understand their point of view. I don't know if they get to understand or even care about my point of view. Not the point. The point is you get to sharpen your conversation skills and in those tough conversations, you're able to flow, right? Practice that, ladies. Practice that. Clubhouse is a very good place to practice conversation skills if you can get, get an opportunity to speak. It's a very good place to practice conversation skills. If you're unable to do that, practice on, I don't know, practice on Snapchat or some of these other places where you can really talk real time with people, right? Practice with your brother and sister. Practice being quiet, letting them speak, and then you speak. The volleyball thing, go back and forth, practice, practice, practice. But you do need to know what's going on in the world. Do you understand at the time of this recording, Israel and Palestine are going at it again. You need to understand the history of that. Why do I need to understand that, Miss Nicole? Why would you want to understand that? It's a good conversations piece. Are you pro-Palestine or pro-Israel? And if you're not, why not? Why are you one way or the other? Why are you in the middle? What are your thoughts? What do you think? Do you know what the Gaza Strip is? Do you know where it's located? These are things that strengthen your relationship with a man your conversation is solid now when he speaks to you you know about something you're not a pretty dummy do you know what's more intriguing to a man is a beautiful woman who has great conversation you stick with me baby everybody's gonna love talking to you 
This is how you know you're a good conversationalist. When people who don't even want to be with you romantically still like talking to you. That's when you know you're a great conversationalist. Okay? All right? So if you don't have guys calling you going, hey, what's up? I just wanted to talk. What's up? Men will never do that. Just I just call just to talk. That's a woman thing. But men will do stuff like... Yeah, so what are you up to this holiday? I just, you know, called to see what's up. It's not always he's reaching out to be romantic. Sometimes, 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 sometimes. You are such a great conversationalist. They love conversing with a beautiful woman, right? For example, Michael Jordan always talks about him talking about ta uh, calling Juanita uh, his ex-wife. You you can say it's a detraction and things like that. I, I think he likes talking to her. I think she's an excellent conversationalist. This is what I'm talking about, ladies. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Great conversationalist, right? All right. Um, optimistic and positive attitude, upbeat and friendly. I'm just talking like this. I had a regular day. I'm not feeling good. I'm not, not, not. boring, 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 boring. Hey, how was your day? What did you do? Oh, how's my big hunk of handsome? I missed you today. That is interesting. Like for instance, if I can sense with my feminine spidey senses that my husband had a bad day, when he walks in, I can kind of see it on his face. I'll go, hi, Archie, I missed you, Archie. And he just starts smiling. I know that's his sweet spot. That's just me and him. Find your sweet spot with your man, married ladies. What's your man's sweet spot? Mine happens to be Edith Bunker, right? But the point I'm trying to make is, connect with your your with your man hey how was your day uh it was all right well how are you doing how you really doing i can sense what's going on you feel like talking you don't feel like talking you want to you want to call me back after you chill for a little bit oh i'm okay you really oh i wish i could rub your back i wish i was there i'd make you a hot chocolate oh you want to facetime or no you want to wait till later? Whenever a man communicates their stress, you can kind of lower your voice, your voice and get a little bit softer. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. When you do that all the time, it's manipulative. Just so you all know. Use your soft, your super, super soft voice strategically. Like you're horny, you're getting ready to go to the bedroom, or there's tension, right? Always lower your voice when there's tension. That's not your first nature, I know. <laughs> but it's, it's something that is something to be said about when you can de-escalate a conversation by your voice tone and your voice volume. So he comes in, he's had a long day, he's got a long face. Hey, what's up? How you doing? Not appropriate. <laughs> okay. But hey, baby, I missed you. How are you? Okay. And he go, Oh, I didn't have a good day. It's been a long day. It was just tripping. It was all right. Most men are not going to go into the particulars. You're going to have to pull it out of them until they've been married 30 years. But most men are going to come in. It was all right. It was a day that's letting you know it wasn't the best day. So now you want to lower your voice. You want to talk about it? Let me get your jacket, daddy. Let me get your coat, baby. You want to talk about it? Can I get your favorite drink? What can I do for you? And if you really want to take it to the next level, you can take it to the next level, ladies. Wink, wink. But you understand what I'm saying? You're starting to pull him out of his, pull him out of himself. Get him to talk. Get him to communicate with you. Don't just brush over that. Because what happens is if you create a habit of brushing over it, you leave an opening for people to be asking him, the girl at his job that he's working next to for hours at a time at work is going to go, hey, what's up? You seem down. You okay? And the next thing you know, he's talking more to her than you. 
That's not what that needs to be doing. He needs to be talking to you more than he talks to people online. This is why I hate married men online more than single men. Don't you have a family, a wife you need to be doing? Don't you have a car you need to fix or a bill you need to pay? Why are you online talking about single people? <laughs> That's weird to me. Wouldn't you look weird at me if I was always online and I'm married? Like, dang, Nicole, it's three in the morning. You don't have a husband? That's <laughs> that's weird. You see married people online 24-7. It's like you cannot be a good spouse on Clubhouse or on YouTube all day. Like you can't. It's it's impossible. But people do it. Uh I don't know. But ladies, that's how you do it. That's how you pull him out of himself. When you notice a change in his volume, his pitch, his cadence, he seems upset kind of slow down now get out of your phone turn the tv off quiet the children hey daddy you want to talk about it make it about him and he'll always make it about you it's always been my mantra but most women well he needs to talk about me i had a good i had a bad day too he is up well you know what sometimes in marriage just so you know it's not always about you first just so you know so if you think it's supposed to always be about you first then you don't need to be married. Now, there are times where you're like, wait, hold up. You picked the last time, last four movies we went to go see. <laughs> I mean, there will be times where you have to speak up. But generally speaking, in marriage, sometimes you should be okay with uh, re uh, referring to the other person first. Or deferring is what I mean. Deferring to the other person at times. It's okay to do that, ladies. Keep sarcasm to a minimum. I know a lot of women that are sarcastic and they think that this is attractive. It's attractive to other women sometimes. But that's not somebody men want to marry. You don't want to roll over to a woman. Oh, you through farting? You've been farting all night. Okay. <laughs> hey, that is not what a man wants to marry. She's always sarcastic men don't want to marry a woman who's always sarcastic always use sarcasm to a minimum ladies ask questions about him he'll ask questions about you but ask questions about him get him talking about himself then add tidbits about you along the way does that make sense? Add tidbits about you that's on topic. You don't have to talk about what happened to you at six years old. Now, you don't have to get that deep that soon, but within appropriateness, you should be able to share with him as you get closer. Does that make sense? But I always ask about him. Again, my mantra is if you make it about him, he'll make it about you. Try not to interrupt when you're having conversation. This is tough when you're having a really highly charged conversation. It's really, really tough not to interrupt, but that actually escalates conversations when you're interrupting each other. Let him finish, then you start. This is challenging, but ladies, I assure you, it will pay off in dividends. If let him get his part out, if you have to leave the space, it's better than you going back and forth and arguing with him verbally. Does that make sense, ladies? Go into another room, calm down. Pick up the conversation when you both have calmed down later. Give him eye contact when he's talking. This is another uh, sophisticated speech. I don't, I don't know, but I want to share this with you. Look a man in his eyes. Nothing more hypnotic than a woman who looks in his eyes. You're looking at your phone, looking at the TV, looking at your shoes, you're looking at his shirt, you're looking at everything but his eyes. Look at his eyes when he speaks. Stop talking. When he's in his phone and he's not paying attention to you, just say, okay, well, I'll, I'll talk to you when you have free time. And nine times out of 10, they go, okay, wait, wait, I was listening, right? But when he's speaking, put your phone down, turn the TV off, turn the volume down, you know, quiet the children, whatever. Hey, don't you hear daddy speaking? Daddy's talking. Respect. It's just basic respect. And that goes a long way. You do that when you're dating. Oh, man, you look in his eyes and he's talking and you're smiling with your eyes. Oh, wow. 
It's hypnotic. Now, mind you, you haven't had sex with him yet. But he's looking in your eyes and you're looking in, in his eyes when he's speaking. Notice when a man looks away a lot, it could be nervousness. But as time goes on, he should start to warm up to you and be and not his eyes shouldn't run away from yours. But he, if he's constantly avoiding eye contact, avoid him. <laughs> okay. Like it's, you shouldn't have to do that much homework or do that much work on a man. Like I get the first couple of interactions. You might be a little bit nervous, but after a while, when I'm looking at you, you should be able to look back at me, right? Give him eye contact when he's talking, generally rub him, touch him, maybe rub his arm, his biceps, maybe touch his knee, touch the back of his head. If you're more familiar with each other, um, rub his arm, his, you know, his hand or something. Um, you can do all of those things while he's speaking. It disarms a man completely. Now, you might want to use this in moderation when the conversation is highly charged and escalated, but when used the right way, it can de-escalate. And if used the right way, it can completely turn the conversation into a more um, intimate conversation. And when I mean intimate, people automatically think sexual relations. All intimacy is not sexual relations intimacy happens before the sex the sex is just part go back to the video i did about intimacy i talked about this all right intimacy when people refer to intimacy and they only are talking about sex they don't know true intimacy true intimacy is into you see into me see right you're into the other person is you and him become one in that moment sex is just the manifestation of that oneness intimacy is oneness you all are thinking alike you're talking alike you are communicating on the same topic the same feed the same energy level complete intimacy you are a part of him and he's a part of you in that moment that's what makes sex so sweet in marriage is that it has that covering of intimacy and intimacy happens the best in marriage because he's committed to you you've committed to him and you've committed to keep each other's secrets you've committed to protect each other and make the space safe that's what makes intimacy so much better in marriage that's why marriage is good when people talk well, that's the benefits of marriage what's the you idiot not only um do am i there for you companionship but you're protected you're covered we have true intimacy you never have true intimacy with someone you're not married to Never, because it's always this doubt in the back of your mind that this could go bad. This could go really, really bad. They could tell all my secrets. They could put all my business out there. And a lot of times, that's exactly what happens. We have, we're seeing all these celebrities getting me tooed. Um, some of those celebrities were in bona fide relationships. Why? Because there was never intimacy. They were just having sex. When you have true intimacy, you're covered. You cover him emotionally and he covers you emotionally. If nobody is teaching you about intimacy like that, that's what we teach over here, right? It's true intimacy is oneness. The sex is the oneness playing out. It's personified through sex. But the oneness is intimacy. That's why you can never have intimacy with a boyfriend, ever. Right. And if someone is referring to intimacy as just sex, they don't know what they're talking about. And that's OK. They don't know. Um, bring him out of himself. Ask him questions. Right. He says he had a hard day. Well, what made it so hard? You told me you enjoy your job. What happened? Oh, was that that fool Johnny messing with you again? Oh, if I ever see him, you, you see how you're connecting with him and you're connecting the dots and you remember conversations, names, places, events. You remember things. Men appreciate that. Now they believe you're the best conversationalist and you are because you remember things. Get the root, get to the root of his pain. If you ever want to see a woman get to the root of a man's pain, I always watch Rocky, Rocky two where he is getting ready to deal with Clubber Lang 
and Adrian and Rocky are on the beach. I played that clip for you and then YouTube didn't like it. So when you go watch Rocky two and it's, he's having a dilemma or is that Rocky three? It might be Rocky three. I'm sorry. I stand corrected. Rocky three, um, Mickey dies and he's on the beach with Adrian and he's, you know, he, he felt like he had imposter syndrome. He's like, I, I'm not as good as I've been told. I don't deserve this. I'm a phony. I'm not as good as I think I am. And Adrian had to really go deep with him and go, you know what? It doesn't matter. It's not, it's about what you feel. I mean, she just really just goes deep with him. That pulls a man to you and that makes him almost emotionally dependent on you when you can get to the root of his pain you can go wait no matter what it's just you and me right it doesn't matter what the world says it's just you and me if you can communicate that to a man and you really mean it oh mg oh man every time i watch this scene i cry i'm like oh my god oh Adrian is just the personification of femininity, right? She's married to this uber masculine man beating people up and she's the, the epitome of femininity in that moment. That is the ultimate masculine feminine moment in cinema, in my opinion, is that particular scene. And that is how you bring a man out of himself and get him talking and get him. Now, when he starts to um, show his emotion, that's not the time to beat him up. Don't do that. Right. Again, you're creating a safe space for him to do that. And then you don't want to hit judge him for his emotions. OK, Anna says, hey, Nicole, if a man is a nice guy, but always makes awkward jokes at your expense, at the expense of you, should you avoid him? Yes. This is a guy who is probably intimidated either by your beauty or intimidated by any woman, period. And he's making jokes because he's super nervous, but he should actually get over the nervousness after a while. After a couple of dates, he should get over the nervousness. Familiarity should set in a little bit. And if he's still cracking jokes at your expense and it's, it's starting to sting you a little bit, get rid of him. Because what he's trying to do is make you chase him. Or what he's trying to do is make you feel a certain type of way. Uh, I don't deserve him. I, he's making you, he's, he's taking jabs at your self-esteem indirectly. And so if you continue to sit there and listen to that and let him get away with that, if you get in a relationship with him, he'll just outright say it. Like right now he'll say, oh, your, um, oh, your nose is not that big. It's kind of cute. Like put a little whipped cream on it and let, okay. That's, it's kind of like a jab. Does that sit well with you? Nah, but if you let that slide, knowing it doesn't sit well with you, again, he's reading you. So when you get in a relationship, he read that you let that slide. So now he gets to go sit your big nose down, your big nose self down. Now he's just straight out blunt with it. So now he's kind of subjugated you or kind of humbled you by taking a backwards compliment. And now he's just flat out insulting you. This is where abuse starts, ladies. Sorry, but it does. <laughs> and it's your feminine instinct kind of like putting a red flag to you or a, a yellow flag going, wait, 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 pay attention to this, Anna. This doesn't feel right. This doesn't feel right. She said, he told me I had vampire eyebrows. So the next time he says that, go, well, I'm confused. Do you like them or do you love them? And he should go, I love them. All right, then. Why are they vampires? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I need to know. Are uh, they all right? No, 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 no. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I need to know if this is an insult or are you paying me a compliment? Because I don't like not knowing. I just want to know how to take that. Just call him out. Is this a good thing or a vampire eyebrows? This is February. This, I mean, is this... You know, this is January. Is this a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> this isn't Halloween. I just need to know. <laughs> you know, you can say it in a light way. You don't have to say it combatively. Just say, whoa, is that a compliment? Or, or you know, what's going on with that? Right? I don't give men that much leeway in the very beginning. I don't. I don't. Because I feel like 
you should be on your best behavior. And the fact that you were just so uh, nonchalant with me in the very beginning lets me know it's going to get worse as I stay with you. <laughs> so I've, I'm I'm very cutthroat in the very beginning. Very cutthroat. Oh, I didn't like what he said. Block and delete. And it's been uh, to my benefit. I've gotten rid of some really bu bugabears. I think that they were good people, but they just, they just, uh, you know, they did something I didn't like. And I was like, oh, okay, I know this isn't going to be someone that I can keep them around for business purposes. But other than that, no. Right. You know what I mean? And he keeps making short jokes as well. I'm short and sexy. You must like it because you keep calling me. Ah, uh, you know, you know, just hit him back with it. Oh, but you like short. But I have power over you. No, you don't. You ain't got no power. Yes, I do because you keep calling me. Uh, why do you keep calling this short ball of sexiness? Because you love me. That's what it is. <laughs> Obviously, you keep bringing it up. That's how you do it. Obviously, you like my shortness because you keep bringing it up. Obviously, it's my power. A lot of men have told me they love my shortness. Right? I bet you he won't bring it up again or he'll just flat out insult you because that's what he's trying to do anyway. All right. So just test it tonight. But you love my shortness, obviously. You can't take your eyes off of me. You keep calling. You can't keep, you can't stop touching me. <laughs> yeah, you do. Obviously, you keep bringing it up. You love my shit. No, I don't know. Watch it stop. <laughs> Watch it stop. Obviously, right? Again, uh, whatever they, they have a problem with, they're going to stop. Okay. Nonverbal cues is communication. Touching him, eye contact, flirting, all of that is non uh, um, all uh, communication. Have a smile on your face when you talk on the phone, ladies. When you're speaking long distance and you're talking to a man, a ma um, if you want to raise the vibration of your conversation, make you sound more light, more feminine, speak with a smile on your face. Hi, how are you? Notice the difference in how I sounded when I started speaking with a smile. Hi, what are you? I, I promise you, I'm not doing anything different to my voice. I do not have a smile on my face right now. But now I do. I have a smile on my face. I just naturally started voice inflections with a smile. When you talk like that with a man, it brings a man. Notice how I do not have a smile on my face as I'm speaking now. But now I do. So when you use a smile on your, when you speak with a smile on your face to a man, you can't help but sound joyful. You can't help it. Notice the difference. I don't have a smile on my face. I do have a smile on my face. Big, big, big difference. Try it. Practice. Do it in front of a mirror and you'll get what I'm talking about. Be confident without, uh, be a confidant without a judgment. If a man tells you a secret, keep the secret. Um, traditional women don't discuss work anyway. Remember I talked about, um, we're almost done here. Remember when I talked about um, you discussing your degrees and things like that? Traditional women don't rely on that. We rely on talking about us and how we are around the home and how we like other things. We don't rely on work, <laughs> okay, to be a conversation piece. So just keep that in mind, ladies, as you're having conversation and you want to know why men are giving you pushback about being traditional. Look at how you converse with them. Is it all about work? Is it all about getting the promotion, starting your business, about money, about traveling, a luxurious lifestyle? If it's all those things, you're going to get pushed back all the time. And for those of you who want to know some of the phrases that you're saying that are turning traditional men off, that's available in the app. You can just download it. Be a good listener, pay attention to what he is saying, all right? Now, online convo, right? You have an online profile, men are reaching out to you. Your conversation needs to be 
um, just like your presentation. So if your presentation is city girl or party girl or kid girl or frat girl or all these things, and then he looks on there and you look like Susie Homemaker getting ready to bake an apple pie, that's not consistent. And he's like, oh, okay, so another phony. Got it. A lot of women are not consistent. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And then he goes to your profile and then it's turn ups, turn up girl. All right. <laughs> you know, it's not consistent. It has to be consistent. And so does your conversation. If you're say you're an educated businesswoman, speak like it, walk like it, talk like it. Right. If you say you want to be married, speak like a woman that wants to be married. Don't speak like a party girl. It's pretty much common sense. But online is is online is the first place men are going to look for your imprint. They're going to look for those crazy party pictures that you posted back in the 90s that are still floating on the Web. <laughs> there are people who have done explicit videos from back in the day are now crying wolf. They want to cry me too so bad and can't because they signed NDAs, but they are so upset because those photos are still circulating in 2024. And they did these videos back in early 2000s. That's the kind of world we live in. And men, especially if they're masters of the universe, blue chip uh, hedge fund type of guys, you know what the first thing they do is they are Googling you, doing background searches before they even bring you to Momsy. Are you kidding me? Don't even think about meeting Buffy and them. And, he ha and you have pictures floating around of you tooting up at Freak Nick or Girls Gone Wild Miami version. Look. Baby, you need to do a scrub. Need to do a scrub. And uh, some women just don't care. Like, that's just me. Okay, well, that's just you. Just understand when they see those photos of you, then understand why they don't call you back or they don't want to take you home to meet Mumsy. I'm just telling you. Okay, so your conversation needs to be, and shout out to my YouTube um, uh, <laughs> moderators. You're absolutely great. Thank you so much. But, uh, Definitely, definitely, please understand that conversation needs to be consistent. Mike check, Mike check up uh, productions. Thanks so much. Once again, this was an excellent breakdown, tons of gems. I will definitely share this with my 22 year old daughter. Thank you so much. Pass it on, share, like, and subscribe. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> make your profile photos delicious. When I say delicious, it should be just enough, but not too much. Okay. It shouldn't be too much breasts and too much booty and too much like rule of thumb two and no more so if you have a little bit of cleavage it shouldn't be arms um uh legs stomach and everything else out pick one or two but no more than that i rule of thumb is just one Shout out to Phineas. Thanks so much for the super chat. I'm a regular dude and do background checks, mostly for criminal stuff. <laughs> ah, thank you so much. Yes, absolutely. But those guys more often than not. But now, ladies, guys are scrubbing you for criminal records. I've been scrubbed for criminal records. My husband, I even asked him, I know you scrubbed me because that's what you do. <laughs> He was like, I sure did. I scrubbed you. So ladies, don't you know this is coming? So do what you have to do to do what you have to do. All right. So if you know they're going to scrub your background, the more successful they are, the more they're going to do that. Some guys like Phineas are just so thorough and they're going to do it because they're looking for a wife. Right. Somebody they're just laying up with. They could care less. OK, you just robbed a bank. Cool. All right, let's get in this bed. But someone that they want to be married to, who they want to know that you robbed a bank and you are a felon. <laughs> they need to know, <laughs> right? They need to know that you hijacked the plane. Like, right? Oh, oh YouTube is going to get me for that one. But you know, you understand what I'm saying, ladies, is that make sure that your online conversation matches and your photos need to be delicious. Don't show too much. Just be modest. This is where good girls win 10 toes down because we, if we take the right pictures, we win every time because men like modesty. They do. They like modesty. They like a beautiful woman who's actually sexy and modest. 
guys like the thrill of oh I want to see what's under that dress they like the thrill of that they like to know they don't like you to just advertise it for free that's sort of like saying hey come get this you know give me a car that everybody likes type in the chat uh, a car a very popular car that everybody likes just give me a make and model right just type it in the chat really quick for me <laughs> he said, I have licenses and clearances. My associations are part. Exactly. Absolutely. Give me a car that everybody likes. A car. A car. Maserati. Okay. So say, for instance, this, uh, this is Maserati. And it's, you know, really, really gorgeous. Everybody likes it, right? And just say the man is thinking about buying it. I mean, he wants a Maserati. He's always wanted a Maserati. He sees this Maserati. Oh, my God, this Maserati. I got to have it. And then he finds out everybody in the neighborhood has had the Maserati. The Maserati has 500,000 miles on it. It's about to fall apart. Like, I mean, in his mind, because it's had so many handlers, it's not exclusive because everybody's had the Maserati. It's not exclusive. He wants something that's exclusive. He wants something. Men are territorial and they are unapologetically territorial, right? Because he's protecting something. He's protecting you. So he's territorial over you. And if he feels like everybody's had a piece of that Maserati, he wants to be able to stunt in the neighborhood and in the community and down the street and all of, he wants to be able to stunt and say, hey, that's my Maserati. Who is driving that cold Maserati? And they're like, oh yeah, I test drove that a long time ago. It's all right. Oh yeah, that's a pretty good car. I had it. And he rolls up to the event and everybody's looking at him. Yeah, this is my Maserati. Yeah. And they're like, oh yeah, I test drove that two years ago. It's all right. No man wants to go through that with his woman. Oh, yeah. I hit that two years ago. She all right. She gives good head, though. Like, no man wants to experience that. Now, fools will marry women like that. Fools will do that. But men generally don't want to do... I'm talking about masters of the universe, men of substance, men of honor. <laughs> okay? Their business associates are... You know, they judge them on how they run their house. And if they could say, oh, I've been with her. I hit that. Oh, my homie hit that six weeks ago. Or, yeah, I remember her. Yeah. Oh, I remember her from somewhere. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember her from that website. Yeah, we had to pay $10 to get on the website. And then they could do X, Y, and Z. Oh, that's her. Oh, ooh. That's your girl? Ooh. That's how men speak. That's how they talk about you, ladies. Oh, she looked familiar. I can't put my finger on it. Oh, oh, she looks familiar. <gasps> OMG, that's that. She was on OnlyFans. Oh, 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 oh. That's your wife? <laughs> Yikes. That's how men talk about women. And women who don't care about this typically are the women that stay single. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. Okay? So, the men who... um bite on your profile or who are traditional will will likely pursue if you are not a traditional woman then you can inbox him what's the point if you're going to stay working after you know you you and him are um dual income earning home you plan to stay in the workforce after you get married why can't you send him a message you can't have it both ways ladies that's why a lot of you are still single excuse me and you don't have to be, baby girl. Take the stress off of yourself and send him a message. I'm going to show you how to do that. If you reach out to them, then you are the pursuer. So if you're traditional, you want to have a, G a juicy profile that, and I can write the profile for you if you are a part of the app. If you're on my app, I'll write the app for uh, write your profile for you, or you can download the templates and just plug in your information. People that have used my templates have gotten really nice dates. So I'm just saying, so I can write it for you, or you can write it. The point I'm trying to make is your profile should be delicious. If you're not a traditional woman, it still should be delicious and it still should be interesting. Okay. 
Once he sends you a message, respond by saying something about him, then say something about you, then ask a question and make it fun, make it light, make it interesting, okay? And respond earlier in the day if possible. If you are online dating, you're on a website, Respond to messages earlier in the morning instead of in the evening. Don't know why. Maybe it's an algorithm thing, but just try that. Avoid using I so much in your statements. I this, I that. Learn how to structure your sentences where you don't use I all the time. It's that, that you know, exercise you did in fifth grade where your teacher wanted you to rephrase the sentence. Okay, when you first learn how to reframe out the word I as much as possible. Use the word I sparingly in your profile. Be interesting, right? And um, for those of you on the app, I'm going to give you some, some dating sites that will benefit you that are doing well. But the point of communication, ladies, is to keep his, communicate, uh, keep his attention. And you can absolutely do this. It's not hard. It's not hard to keep a man's communication, uh, keep his attention with good communication. The great gift of conversation lies less in displaying it ourselves than in drawing it out of others. Conversation is all about drawing the other person out. Conversation is not hard. It's not hard. But you do need to know how to do it. It's a man keeping skill that will keep you in the game. It will keep your man interested. It will keep your conversation, uh, your relationship juicy. Um, for those of you who are long distance and your husband, let's say he's um, on a business trip, phone sex, you're married, call him, phone sex. What you have on, baby? You just got out of the shower. Oh, I love it when you come out of the shower. You smell so good. And it, that, that sweat is, hey, you know, the shower sweat is still on you. You're still wet and you snatch the towel off of me. You understand what I'm saying, ladies? That's how you keep it hot. Some of you know phone sex better than you know regular conversation. Switch that. Your regular conversation needs to be good, just like your phone sex. I'm phone sex queen. I am absolutely great at it. I should teach a course in phone sex. <laughs> I am great at phone sex. And sometimes, ladies, if you want to keep the magic in your marriage, do phone sex. He doesn't have to be, be out of town. He could just be on the way home from work. And you go, oh, I cannot wait to touch it. Like, you know what I mean, ladies? Just be creative. Come out of yourself, which is why I created the Erotic Book Club. Not just so we could just be hornballs and we never touch our husbands, but so that we are hornballs and we touch our husbands. That's why I created the Erotic Book Club. It's on the app, ladies. Stop being cheap. Get on the app. Invest in you, right? Learn from other women and get in this book club and read the books and give you ideas. It kind of brings you out of yourself and helps you to become this, this flowy, feminine, sexy being that your husband can't keep his hands off of, right? That's what you want, right? And don't let women who love married men and all of these loose women out here just, you know, they're going to talk smack about getting your woman, getting all of that, getting your, I'm sorry, getting your husband and all of that. Don't, don't let that go in one ear and out the other. Just know that I handle my business at my house. Know that and do that. That's what I'm talking about, ladies. Two hours in about conversation. Has any of this helped you ladies? Hopefully it has. Hopefully it has. But when you smile, your tone is differently and people can tell the the pitch of your voice gets higher and it sounds so much pleasant. And ladies, when you speak, when you speak to men, especially in the beginning, use your voice to go up at the end of your sentences. Like when you talk about something and at the end of your sentence, go up. And so when we went to the mall, we did X, Y, and Z. And when we had lunch, 
we did X, Y, and Z. Notice how at the end of my sentence, the it, it the uh, the tone not the tonation, but the not the volume, but you don't understand what I'm saying. The the pitch goes up at the end of the sentence. Raise the sentence at the end, right? How are you, Queen of South? How are you doing today? Always speak with your sentences going up, not down. When a woman speaks with her sentences going down, she tends to be boring. It's, it starts to sound flat. See how I did that? All my sentences are going down. It starts to sound flat. No one wants to sit and listen to someone talk down. Every sentence is like talking down. At the end of her sentences, she ends it by going down. Right? <laughs> like, oh, my God, this is boring when this is over. Uh, also, <laughs> also, your volume is uh, some women have a natural volume that is a little bit um, louder than others. It doesn't make you more feminine than the next woman. It just means that your voice is softer than this. Uh, in elementary school, I had a um, we did a play and she got the part of reading this poem about butterflies because her voice was so soft butterflies and we just like even in elementary school her voice was just so soft butterflies and we were just every time she spoke we were just we were just paralyzed to listen to her because her voice was like that it doesn't make her more feminine but it does give her an audience with more people because her tone was just butterflies and marilyn monroe to her credit she talked a lot uh like this she talked very breathy oh i didn't know oh you want to use this in <laughs> in moderation because you don't want to come off like a dumb bimbo and you don't want to come off manipulative and you don't want to come off fake so you want to use that in moderation um but if this is naturally who you are go for it but you know try to lower your volume sometimes and when you do public speaking you're going to notice that people encourage you to speak up <laughs> and so having a good mic works in your your in best interest but you will find out that when you lower your tone with men they start to listen more right hopefully ladies this helped with communication i'm going to leave this up right because i've told you the year of 2024 we're going to focus on communication this is i, I if i come across another beautiful woman that cannot speak and ladies, if you have a hard time with communication, um, get on my app because I tell you the words you need to use when you're talking to certain type of men, communication, understanding different things that um, help you kind of blend in and, and, and it helps you level up your communication game. I, I do that in the app. I can't do that in public, but certain things... Um, help elevate you just like I told you certain things that women say and do now lets me know okay I need to be on guard with her talking about hypergamy all the time talking about luxury all the time talking about my lifestyle all the time manifestations and my bound all of these things put me in on alert with women and on my app I cover all of that stuff you will never have these problems <laughs> <laughs> you will never have these problems. Shout out to that. So shout out to the ladies on the app. I have a book I want to send you all that I think is going to help you. Uh, and I'm always sending you free downloads and stuff on the app all the time. So get on the app. It's a small investment, but I think you're worth it. Don't you think so? Don't you think you're worth the investment? Marry me cookies. I put that recipe on there yesterday or the day before marry me cookies and marry me chicken is on there too so i have everything on there recipes what you should order when you go out all of these good things uh on the app on the app on the app so ladies hopefully if there's no questions i don't see anything i think we've covered all of the questions thank you pandora thank you miss wit thank you devin <laughs> 
But always speak with a smile, especially when you're on the phone with a man. Rule of thumb, speak, put a smile on your face. Hey, how are you? What's going on? Even a fake smile, your voice sounds lighter and more friendlier, right? Even with a fake smile. And by the time, by the time you're going to get on Friday, okay, no problem. We'd love to have you. By the time you master the fake smile of talking, you will have a genuine smile when you talk. And men will love speaking with you. When a man tells you, I just love talking to you, you're just so down to earth, you're just so cool. That means you have great conversation and he likes talking to you. And to be honest with you, respectfully, a lot of men keep a lot of women around just because they like talking to you. It has nothing to do with sex, has nothing to do with your looks. They just like talking to you. They'll probably never marry you, but they still like talking to you. And, you know, and that's what I'm here for to help you pull and make you a total woman. The looks, the looks are on point. The conversation is on point and your morals and values and your goals and who you are is on point. All of that faith, family, and femininity, all of that is on point. He's yours. You know, automatically, I think this is going to be my husband. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, he's it. Right. <laughs> and you move with so much more confidence when you can speak. I don't care who he is. I can get a conversation out of him. And when I come across a complete jerk, like I did on my IG or something like that, I don't, I don't, I don't keep going. Like I'm good. It's obviously this isn't going to go anywhere. I'm good. I don't waste time or energy. I don't argue. I don't come out of myself. I don't get all of that finger snapping and cursing and all that. No, I influence him by leaving. I let him know. And when you leave, when you bless people with your absence, People learn really quick. Okay, yeah, I must have did something because she doesn't pick up the phone anymore. People will learn very quick how to deal with you. I have never, I think one time, I think years ago, maybe 2017 or 18, I said my Facebook page, we do not curse. And I said it maybe two or three times. I've never had to say it since then. And on my page now, people that are new, I've never said there's no cursing on my page, but they don't curse. It's because of how I present myself and how, and you can do the same thing. People will fall in line with how you need them to act <laughs> when you carry yourself a certain way and present yourself a certain way. If you carry yourself like, hey, if they get loud with me, I'm getting loud with them. And, uh, you know, this hood going to come out of me. Okay. All right, Miss Hood. Then you, then you get what you get then people will literally talk any kind of way around you. They will disrespect you any kind of way. Go have your way. Oh, you're boo. Okay, I'm bougie, but I guarantee you they don't talk like that around me. They do it one time and they don't do it again. There is a way to get people to treat you a certain way. And it's how you carry yourself. It doesn't mean that something's wrong with you or that it has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with how you show up in the public square, everything. And people that tell you, do you, it doesn't matter what people think. It's all about you. It's all about your truth. I guarantee you they're single. I promise you. I guarantee you I can put money on it. I guarantee you they're single. Nobody married is telling you to do things your way. They're telling you, look, <laughs> this is a virus market right now. <laughs> and men, <laughs> unfortunately, if you want a husband, there's certain things you have to fall in line with. And I know women don't want to hear that because they've been listen, listening to feminist rhetoric for so long. I can do what I want. I can say what I want. I can wear what I want. I can do it. Okay, then stay single because in marriage, you affect his bottom line emotionally, physically, business wise, <laughs> you affect every a part, every part of him. And so it does matter what people think about you and your truth needs to be the truth, period. Hopefully this helps some people. I love you all. I didn't mean to step on people's fingers, toes, and any other limb, but this has to be, we're going to go deeper into conversation this year. 
And I may do, I'm thinking about doing a workshop about communication because a lot of times when we talk about communication, it's usually small talk. It's usually just with women or it's speaking seductively to a man to get something from him. And that is just a very selfish way. And that strategy, actually, (laughs) a selfish way to look at men. I look at men like they are people and they want to open up too. And my femininity can get him to open up. My communication can open up. I can use my mouth to speak life into him or to speak destruction. I choose to speak destruction. My my mouth, my communication is the suburbs. I do not curse. And I do not do any of that uh, to people in the public square and at home either. I don't curse at my husband. I don't curse at my man. I don't curse at my children. If you curse at your children and your man, stop now. You don't have to tell me. Just stop now. Stop cursing at your man and stop cursing at your children. Stop. Stop cursing at your friends and stop cursing at people. Okay? Be the suburbs of conversation and speak like top notch. Okay? Cursing is the ghetto of communication, and I stand by that. It is. It is. You don't have to do it. It sounds nasty. It's vulgar. And beautiful women who do it, it's like, why, though? (laughs) It's like, it's not even needed. Learn how to express yourself like an elegant woman that deserves the utmost respect, that deserves the red carpet treatment everywhere you go. And people, especially men, they'll give it to you. Because guess what? You know what you communicate to a man when you're okay cursing every which way in any kind of way just because you're triggered? You know what you communicate to a uh, high-powered, world-class man who's international, global, (laughs) masters of the universe, uh, blue chip, uh, hedge fund type of guy, just a regular guy. You know what you communicate? That anytime I'm triggered, I can embarrass you. That's what you communicate. And that's why it's dangerous, and that's why I tell you in my school – Not to do that, baby. You don't have to. Speak like an elegant young woman. And if they piss you off, (laughs) bless your heart, baby. Bless your heart. Grace be unto you, baby. (laughs) That's how you do it. You never have to curse at people. And they know exactly when you're cursing at them and not cursing at them. (laughs) With that being said, remember, I love you and Jesus Christ loves you. Oh, and if you haven't downloaded the app, it's Feminine Elite Society app. And it's available on Apple and Google, y'all. Get on it, baby girl. Step your game up. This is the end of January. And you all are talking about leveling up. You're talking about elevation and all of this kind of stuff. I don't see it. Elevate, baby. Elevate. That means investing in you. That means making some sacrifices somewhere. Do it. Try it out. And let me know what you think. We get good ratings and for a reason. And I'm constantly pouring content in there to help you elevate. Learning how to speak elegantly. Using words. People will never know how you grew up because of how you speak. That's the kind of stuff we're learning over there. Where to go, what to do. We're coming up on gala season, right? We're getting ready for that. My ladies already have their itinerary. They know where to go, what to do, what to wear. That's what we're doing on the app. I would love to see you all over there. Remember, I love you when Jesus Christ loves you. And until the next time,